Hello, welcome to the Friday, August 23rd, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today I'll start out uh, with a story that has sort of been developing all week and that's about uh, well how Valve uh, kind of misstepped in bug bounties. Valve is the company behind the popular online gaming platform Steam and Steam is offering a bug bounty via the HackerOne platform. Vasily Kravitz is a researcher that recently found a privilege escalation flaw in Steam and reported it via the HackerOne platform, of course, expecting a reward. What instead happened was that Valve told him that uh, privilege escalation flaws are really sort of out of scope for Steam. So he shouldn't expect any bug bounty for this particular flaw. And that's sort of where some arguing apparently started between Kravitz and Valve, which resulted in Kravitz being kicked out of the bug bounty program. It's of course always a difficult decision here to accurately identify the value of particular vulnerabilities and it has happened before that the reporter of a vulnerability and the company that owns the product don't necessarily agree on the severity. Uh, to put this a little bit in perspective, uh, Steam is really a platform to run code. As a developer, you can develop a game that runs within this Steam essentially virtual machine and with that your game can run on whatever platform is supported by Steam, which of course you know, sort of increases the reach of a particular game. But this makes it really difficult for Steam to actually prevent privilege escalation flaws, in particular since some components in Steam run as administrator, so they have full low-level access to things like graphics drivers and the like, which of course is important for many games performance. But to make a long story short, the real problem then started uh, this week when Vasily found a second vulnerability in Steam. And of course at this point Vasily had no incentive whatsoever to report this vulnerability directly to Valve, instead he just made it public. This second vulnerability was actually a little bit more severe. It was one of those uh, DLL injection vulnerabilities. So Valve and Vasily actually started to make up now and uh, Vasily got some reward for his vulnerabilities and got reinstarted into the bug bounty program. So in short, uh, while bug bounty programs remain a very powerful tool in order to give researchers an easy way to get credit and some reward for any vulnerabilities they find, they really need to be careful managed so they don't backfire like in this case. And earlier this week, we talked about a Ruby gem that uh, was malicious and included in many projects. Well, uh, today we have NPM and here it is the BB Builder module that in addition to really not doing much of anything did include some Windows executable that would steal passwords from the systems it was installed on. This particular file was found by Reversing Labs. Reversing Labs undertook the pretty monumental challenge to scan all NPM packages. There are now, according to Reversing Labs, 9 million different packages with 1.7 billion files and about 37.5 terabytes of data. It took them about a week to scan through all of this data and what they found was this Windows executable that sort of caused their attention and when they looked closer they found a good old password stealer. The likely intent here is to cause some confusion with the BB Build project. BB Build is a somewhat popular project. Uh, BB Builder luckily wasn't really all that often downloaded, so the damage here was somewhat limited, but still shows that there isn't really much scrutiny in getting NPM packages accepted into this very vast ecosystem. And phishing scams against Outlook 365 just got a little bit more difficult to spot. Not only are attackers now hosting their 
phishing pages within Asia and getting a valid Microsoft certificate as a result. There are also screen scraping custom login pages that companies may set up. As a company, if you're using Outlook 365, you can customize the login page that your users will see when they are connecting to Outlook 365. That of course can be used to sort of you know, tip off users that they are on a phishing site, but this particular phishing kit discussed by Rapid7 does actually grab the authentic background image and such from the Outlook 365 login page for the particular company. Well, and this is it for today and it's it for this week. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.